First of all, thank you for staying. Uh, Paul has promised everybody drinks afterwards, so please stay just a little bit longer. I promise to spend only about 50 minutes talking. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll do it in 10 minutes while he's bringing up the presentation. Um, I have to correct him. I hate to correct my, my host. Uh, we are just not partners. We are customers. Um, and we're just not partners in the sense of um, marketing together. We're partners in terms of engineering together. Um, so let's get started. Um, DDN's the answer. Um, but what's the question? Um, I, I think it's important. Um, first of all, uh, some of you care about AI, right? Raise your hand, just make Siri awake, okay? Um, most of you, if you don't care about AI, you care about HPC, it's all good. But there's a fundamental truth in the industry today. If you want to attract top talent, you need the top resources, bar none. So if you're the Microsofts, if you're the Facebooks, if you're the tax, you need to have the resources to supply it. And today I will say that that resource needs to be a supercomputer. And why is that? So I'm going to talk mostly about AI, but we can also talk about HPC because there are similar problems. Fundamentally, the data is growing at exponential rate. Some will say 160 zettabytes by 2025. Could be more, could be less, lots of data. AI research is exploding. Again, exponential. Complexity of models is increasing. So sometimes we talk about Moore's Law doubling transistors every two years. It turns out that the model complexity is doubling every three months. Think about it. the model complexity, which means you need more data, you need more compute. But if your GPUs and your CPUs aren't increasing at every three months, what does that mean? It means your systems get bigger if you want to solve the problems. So NVIDIA loves to solve problems, been doing it for a while. We built the DGX SuperPod. Some people called it CRC supercomputer. Not too long ago, it was the number 22 supercomputer, 96 node system. It was the top commercially commodity-based supercomputer in the world. But it had some fundamental essential components to it. To be able to build a supercomputer in a way that can be used, it had to have good compute, DGX2s. It had to have good networking, Mellanox. And it needed to have great storage, of which DDN is a superb solution for that case. And it needed to have good software. So the SuperPod 96 DGX2s, 192 uh, petaflops, Terabit of data bandwidth, terabit of data bandwidth. Lots of I.O. I.O. is essential because to be able to drive the more complex models, you need more data. But you know what? That's not enough. We need more. I'll come to that in a second. DGX2, you've seen it. Very important. Has up to 10 Mellanox interfaces. It's a very important number. And by the way, people taking pictures, we'll make it available. Uh, we'll send it out so you can see it. So the SuperPod basically is a lot of DGXs. In this scenario, where you say in 64, has InfiniBand infrastructure, both for the compute, so inter-GPU communication, and for the storage. But you see there's a question mark on the storage. What's the answer? I gotta, Paul, you got to say that louder. DDN. DDN, of course. DDN is a superb choice. Skip that. So not only were we the top 22 supercomputer in the world, we also world record MLPerf numbers for inference uh, or for training and then most re recently inference. But you know what? NVIDIA fundamentally loves to build ecosystems. We love to build foundations on which everybody else can build a solution. So we love to share information. So early on, we worked with DDN on the DDN A3i, which is basically a reference architecture. You talk about small scale, a few DJXs, 
plus some storage. But I know Paul, I know Jensen, they love to go big. So we took the supercomputer, the super pod, and said, you know what, let's, let's, let's break DDM. Did we break DDM? No. Nope. Well, we did a little bit. <laughs> we did a little bit, but that's important. Because what it told us is we could work with DDN and solve problems. We could take those issues that we ran into because we're pushing storage performance, I.O. performance to record levels. We're changing the equations. We're creating an environment in which all flash storage is super critical. We're driving up the requirements for I.O. So we said, hey, let's take their systems. Let's plug it into our supercomputer. Let's beat it up. Let's break it a little bit just a little bit. Let's fix it. Let's create a better solution. A better solution. But you know what? It's good we're late on this call or on this uh, presentation because Jensen who presented, by the way, go, go watch his uh, recording of his presentation, talked about something new that is, will transform the industry. All of you who have DDN equipment will become very happy. What if you drive a Mercedes or BMW. What if it suddenly became 20 times more efficient or 20 times faster? So just moments ago, half an hour ago, Jensen announced something called NVIDIA Magnum IO. What is NVIDIA Magnum IO? It is a partnership with DDN and other companies, Mellanox, to accelerate IO because we talked about, you know, we have big really big models that need lots of data. We have GPUs that are starving because we can't get the I.O. Magnum I.O. is basically doing direct RDMA from GPUs to storage. I mean, we all know the history of RDMA. It's been around in Finiband or with Rocky on the Ethernet. But there was a fundamental challenge in that you're constrained, your I.O. is constrained by CPU capacity. So if you have workloads that needed both CPU and GPUs, and you had lots of I.O., you would run into a problem. CPUs would go away. So you couldn't feed the GPUs. Magnum I.O. accelerates I.O. to wire speed. So remember earlier I said, hey, you know, at 8 to 10 network cards, InfiniBand or Ethernet cards on a DGX2? Think about wire speed. Suddenly you're going from, I mean, traditional, maybe seven gigabytes per second per interface to wire speed. 80 gigabytes per DGX2 or more, read write. Eliminating the bottleneck on the CPU so you can get the performance and be able to execute on that performance, use your resource, take the DDN hardware that you have today and immediately get better performance. We are working very diligently and unfortunately Jensen didn't announce some things that will happen be announced later this week but will that show the value of collaborating and doing engineering and if you want we've got a couple documents we've got the base superpod document we also talk about the testing that we've done I'm a valuable resource if you want to reach out to me Darren J at nvidia.com and we can look at how to solve your problems where GPUs are critical. It doesn't have to be DGX2. It can be IBM, it can be Dell, it can be HPE. We work with it all. But again, bringing it back to the data. Data is critical. Performance is critical. Leveraging the strength of DDN, who's been around for 20 years. 20 years, am I right? 20 years, solving the problems that you all care about, working with industry leaders, such as Mellanox on networking, NVIDIA on GPUs, to create better together solutions that accelerate your performance. And you know what? That's it. I told you to be quick, get her done. Paul will buy you drinks. And if you, if you don't ask me questions, I will ask you questions. Yeah, any questions for Darren? And I'll keep you even longer. Come on, we need at least one. Paul, got any questions? Oh, we've 
mentioned more than Recent experience, can you share a little bit of the experience of uh, recent, because obviously we've heard uh, from various users, right, that, that took, and I think the, the technology and the implementations have uh, improved really tremendously, right, and it's yep. all about, you know, time to production nowadays, it's no longer, you know, from the time you guys cut POs, you want to be in production, right? And I think we've worked very hard at doing this. So can you share a little bit on how, you know, just the recent uh, event, past couple of weeks, I don't know what you can share, but really, absolutely, you know, how it transpired. Love, love to share about that. Uh, the key fact that I missed about the, the, the super pond, we deployed in two weeks. A supercomputer, commodity, in two weeks. Never been done before. But what's more interesting is if you look at the storage component, because we're like, hey, Jensen said, we want to test DDN. Let's get the equipment in, let's connect it up. Four hours from time to rack to time to run. Time to rack, time to run. Four hours. And I'll tell you kind of a, you know, I'll tell you a little insider information about NVIDIA. You know what? Go back, go back six months. There's a bunch of people that said, hey, you know what, Luster, it's kind of old. DDN, you know what? How can they solve our problems? But the reality is, because of the experience and the relationship, because we're able to deploy in four hours, now we're huge fans. And we're huge fans and we're buying DDN gear. That's why I can say I'm a partner, I'm a customer. That's an engineering collaboration. We're going to do more testing. We're going to expand and look at different verticals. We're going to look at HPC. We're going to look at ways to solve problems. Because when DDN wins, we win. When we create solutions that work together, we all win. We make life easier for you. So how, I've got some questions for you. I'll make it easy. How many of you have GPUs in your environment? Good, 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 good. How many have DGXs? Oh, no, we got to fix that. we got to fix No, that's okay. Uh, it's good. How many of you uh, prefer to use the cloud for GPUs and good? Well, you obviously have DDN, so you like on-prem. Good. Thank you very much. I'll be here for a little bit afterwards. Uh, again, I like to keep it short and sweet. Uh, NVIDIA is a performance company, so we get her done quick. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron.